Is it really possible to finish Dying Light right at the start of the story? Well, after seeing some fun comments on my previous video joking that my next one would be how to beat Dying Light on 0% story, it did make me laugh, but it also made me think of a little oddity in the following DLC, where you could trigger an alternate ending by finding some hidden items spread throughout the map. And it got me wondering if it was possible to make it happen not only on 0% of the story in the following, but also whilst using a 0% campaign save to do it and therefore technically finishing the whole game right at the start. Okay, so I know this isn't really beating the game, but I'd never tried it out myself, it looked fun, and of course I had to give it a go. So before you can play the following DLC, you need an existing campaign save for it to work, so I started a new campaign, and as soon as I was able to leave Brecken's Tower, I quit straight out to the main menu and tried to load a new game of the following. But it turns out that you can only play it once you've completed the prologue in the main campaign. And this basically means that you're going to have to set all of Spike's traps and sleep through the night, and then the next day you'll start getting messages to say that the online features and all of your DLC is now unlocked. And that means that you can now quit out to the main menu and select play and then the following, and when you hit a new game this time there'll be a warning that this game is intended for seasoned players and that you should only play with a character of at least level 12 survivor rank. Of course it is advisable in my opinion to complete the main campaign first, and then the following is just like a cool sequel. Plus you'd have unlocked the grappling hook and the weapons and all of the skills etc. But for the purposes of this video, and having already completed the game myself, I just went ahead and started without any of these things using this 0% story campaign. After skipping all of the cutscenes, you find yourself in the sewer system, and it's only a short distance to the cave entrance that leads to the countryside. When you finally emerge, you get a great view of the new map from this vantage point, and you can see just how much more open the following is than the slums or old town. First, you have to make your way across to that rock column, and as we haven't unlocked the grappling hook yet, it's a case of climbing over there. It's pretty straightforward though, and once you've made it, the only thing left to do is to jump. They've done a great job of making me feel the rush of jumping from height. I always feel as though I'm really plummeting to certain doom. But if you aim away from the rocks, then you will survive the fall, and then you just have to swim towards the painted rock, and then you're back on dry land. To complete this challenge, there are three items that we need to look for, and they're all around one to two kilometers away from each other, and spread right across the map. So although it's entirely possible to walk to each location, it would of course take a long time to get from one to another. And the main addition to the following, that wasn't in the main campaign, is that of a buggy to get around in. Straight ahead of you now is Jazir's farm, and once you've spoken to some key people in there, it triggers the first mission, which is to look for a vehicle at the nearest farm. However, I was interested to see if it was possible to get the buggy before this, so I opened the map. As always, when you've just started a new game, the map is shaded out until you begin exploring, which does make it difficult to find places but you can just about make out the outlines of buildings and landmarks, so I dropped a waypoint on the location, and after hitting Survivor Sense, could see that it was only 454 metres away, and it would be easy to run there from here. Of course, with such a low Survivor rank, you have to keep stopping to catch your breath, but the zombies seem pretty docile at the moment, and there isn't too much urgency. The border wall is topped with barbed wire, but it's simple enough to just climb onto the water pipe and leap over from there. Unfortunately, the buggy is not here, and in fact there should be a ton of bandits here too, so clearly the only way is to go back to the farm and to speak with Jazir and then Khan in order to trigger the buggy quest. Once I'd got the Khan and Abel quest trapped on the screen, I had to run the 300 meters to get back to the buggy, and it was a bit more perilous this time, as curiously in the following, ordinary zombies can just randomly transform into virals and chase you down and, armed only with this crappy pipe, I didn't really want to fight them, so I just had to try and outrun them, whilst at the same time not alerting the bandits to my presence, as I vaulted over the wall and into enemy territory. Again, having no way to fight these guys presented another problem, and they have rifles and grenades, so really the only option was to make a dash for the buggy and hightail it out of there before they even realised what was going on. And, amazingly, it worked. I took a couple of hits and probably could have done it smoother with practice, but it worked. To complete the quest, you'd have to drive back to Khan, but of course we're not going to do that, as I was eager to see if we could now go off and find the three items. Opening the map again and locating this cluster of rocks on the east coast is the next task, and once a waypoint is dropped again, Survivor Sense reveals that it's going to be a one kilometre drive to get there. 
Now inside the buggy, you can see warning lights on the left of the cockpit that tell you when buggy parts need replacing, and there's a fuel gauge on the right. There wasn't much fuel in it, so I had to go and find some and fill up in order to complete the challenge. But as long as the buggy is kept on the road as much as possible and not used to smash too many zombies, then the parts should last. Which is good, because I really didn't want to spend loads of time looking for parts. A quick look at the exterior shows that it's really nothing special at the moment, and even though I own several buggy skins, they really make very little difference until you've unlocked all of the good stuff from the driver level skill tree. But the veteran's ride skin at least made the cage more colourful, so I went for that one. Also, not having unlocked the electric cage yet will mean that it'll be harder to shake off the virals if they jump onto the buggy. If you haven't seen the buggy in action with the electric cage, full buggy skin and flamethrower, I'll close out the video with a little display at the end. Okay, back to the first item needed to complete the challenge. Making my way from the farm to the east coast is not made easy due to the fact that the roads are very hard to make out on the map. You just have to spam survivor sense frequently in order to be at least heading in the right direction, but the terrain's always throwing obstacles in the way if you go off road, so it's a case of trial and error really. Once I'd made it to this coastal road though, I knew I was almost there as this is where Bilal's gas station is. I've spent a lot of time there as later in the game it becomes a safe zone and Bilal is the quartermaster in the following. Just past the gas station is an old windy dirt road down to the sea edge and once I'd navigated my way down and looked out to sea, it became pretty clear where we had to go next. So, a fairly long swim to the rocks and a quick look at the map shows that this area is now marked as an unexplored place. And if you walk to the edge and look down below the surface, you can just about make out the wreck of a crashed helicopter. And that is where the first item is hidden. Turning to the right of the wreckage, you can just see in the distance a body floating ahead. And after swimming towards that, you'll see an unopened crate, which is exactly what we are after. This crate is not locked and you simply have to select use to trigger the opening action and a look inside reveals the nuclear codes. So that's the first of our mystery items found and opening the map and looking southwest of this rock cluster we're now looking for a large site with two large buildings side by side with some circular shapes underneath it which are in fact silos. Again I dropped a waypoint, hit survivor sense and could see that it's going to be a further one kilometer and after swimming back to shore and heading up to the main road, I took the opportunity to pull into the gas station and grab some fuel, but I had to move away from the zombies to fill up as they just kept harassing me. Again, looking at the map doesn't really help much as it's all shaded out still and a mixture of spamming survivor sense and looking for landmarks is the only way. It's not long though before you can actually see this site in the distance as it does stand out quite a bit from the surroundings. You can pretty much follow alongside the railway track apart from where you get to the bridge area, but there's a shallow river crossing below it and the site does come back into view when you've climbed up the other side of the bank. Once you get through the main entrance and enter the yard, a warning flashes up about a freak of nature and how dangerous they are. And at this location, you'll see at the top of the screen a health bar for the behemoth. Now, in the absence of any decent weapons, I really didn't want to fight this guy, as it'd be almost impossible. So it was going to have to be a case of grabbing what I needed and dashing back out of there without getting involved. So I waited until he'd thrown something to give me a few more seconds, jumped in, quickly ran to the back of the barn where the crate for the second item is located. Opening that revealed the military transport key and I just grabbed it when I got hit by the behemoth almost dying. But I just about made it out, despite walking through the toxic waste, and then the virals went and got me before I could get back in the buggy. And I respawned 180 meters away in the nearest hunter's tower. Now that was pretty annoying, but I hadn't lost the key, and by the time I got back to the buggy, the virals were gone, so it wasn't that bad. So that's two out of the three, and our next destination on the map is just a little further to the west, and is by Haran Dam. Dropping a waypoint, backing out and hitting survivor sense shows that it's another one kilometre to get there, but this is a more straightforward journey, and the dam is literally signposted as a place of interest further down the road, and when it comes into view, we need to head straight past it, and then take a sharp left past the rocks and the trees to go down to the water's edge. Our last item is at the bottom of this reservoir and you need to swim out to the middle and kind of line yourself up with the wall on the left and the rocks on the right and then dive down to the bottom where you'll find another body. Turning it over reveals the military activation card and now we have all three items needed to trigger our alternate ending. Of course there's one more location we'll need to get to in order to use all of these items. And opening the map, scanning up until you see this safe house, and then moving right until you can just about make out two long vehicles on the highway, that's where we're going to drop our last waypoint. 
and you can see that it's going to be about two kilometers to get there and it was on this journey that I got attacked by virals whilst driving for the first time. I'd been pretty lucky up to now and on my main save I would just blast them with the electric cage but of course I have none of that on this save and all I could do was slam on the brakes and hope that they'd fly off which they did most of the time. After what seemed like a really long drive, the military convoy finally came into view and it's the first trailer with the extended side sections that we're interested in. Despite being surrounded by zombies, it's easy enough to get around to the back door of the trailer and hop up to gain access using our military transport key. And once the door opens, it reveals a nuclear warhead at the back of the room. Next we approach the terminal on the right hand corner and use the military activation card and then the computer to unlock the warhead. And finally, we turn to the warhead itself and enter the nuclear codes. And I'll let this bit play out without commentary. Enjoy. Emergency lock override accepted. Preparation of nuclear warheads in progress. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, So there you have it, you actually can finish the game using a 0% story campaign save and while still at 0% of the story in the following. But of course it is little more than just a bit of fun and the option to quit the end credits takes you straight back to the main menu where you can select continue and that will take you straight back to Jazir's farm to complete the Khan and Abel quest. So you could do this at any point in your progress and wouldn't lose anything as you can go straight back to your last save. But you'll find the buggy will still be where it was last left and you can only use the recall feature to bring it back to the farm after you've talked to Esgi in the caravan and that triggers the Gaining Credence quest. Okay, I did say earlier that I'd play out the rest of the video with some footage of my main save buggy and here it is sporting the Haran Tactical Unit buggy skin which is my new favourite behind the Vulcan Combat Armour skin. They're both great but I do love the flashing lights on this one. And on the inside you can see my Bilal bobblehead on the dashboard. There are several of these and other accessories to find in the following and plenty of buggy skins too. And when you've unlocked all of your driver skills then you can have a ton of fun smashing up the zombies, blasting them with the flamethrower or the electric cage among many other cool features. So if you own Dying Light I would strongly recommend that you get the following DLC too if you haven't already got it that is. And if you have it but haven't got around to playing it yet then just dust it off and get it on. As always, I hope you liked this video, and if you watched until the end, then I thank you, and please leave a like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.